Hello, little scientists. It's Miss Gisa. Today, we start to learn about a new animal life cycle. The life cycle of, do you guys know what this is? A horseshoe crab. And the story today is called Horseshoe Crabs and Shorebirds. The story of a food web. Written by Victoria Crunson and illustrated by Annie Cannon. It is a foggy, drizzle night in early spring. Deep down in the cold muck at the bottom of Delaware Bay, ancient lucky creatures begin a journey. They are horseshoe crabs, descendants of seagoing spiders. Each spring, they crawl from the bay bottom and travel to sandy beaches to dig nests and lay billions of eggs. Horseshoe crabs have been making this journey every spring since before the time of dinosaurs. Upon the bounty of their pearly green eggs, a remarkable food web has grown. Horseshoe crabs travel slowly and at night, walking on ten spidery legs, protected by hard, bowl-shaped shells, they plow through the mud, stirring up worms, clams, and dead fish to eat. Bristles on their legs grind up the food as they walk. Behind their legs, stacked up like pages of a book, are flat gills for breathing. When it suits them, horseshoe crabs turn upside down and swim. They flap the pages of their book gills like paddles and use long spiky tails as steering rudders. Each night's travel brings them a little closer to shore. Meanwhile, far away at the tip of South America, millions of shorebirds begin a journey of their own. In spring, many flocks fly halfway around the world to their nesting grounds near the Arctic Circle. During the long and exhausting flight, shorebirds stop only a few times to rest and feed. The hungry birds must find plenty of food at annual stopover spots where they will not have the energy to go on. Flapping their wings constantly day and night, they head northward toward Delaware Bay. They must arrive in time for the great horseshoe crab egg feast and refuel or they will never reach the Arctic to nest. On a warm evening in May at Delaware Bay, after many nights journey, an army of brown domes emerges from the water and gathers along the shoreline. Row upon row, for miles along the beach, male horseshoe crabs assemble. The high tide churns, whirls, sucks foamy suds around them. Shells clack clack together as waves shove them back and forth. Dark tails poke up out of the water like waving spears. A few horseshoe crabs get flipped onto their backs. Legs kicking the air, they are set sliding up the sand or cartwheeling helplessly through the surf. But most of the males do not break ranks and venture ashore. They fight the tide, hold the line, and wait for hours for the females to arrive. A full moon peers over the lip of the horizon and spills silver light on thousands of dark, glistening shells. The tide has turned. The wait is finally over. Females ride the waves to shore. Quickly, the males crowd around them. They use special clasper claws on their front legs to hook onto the back edges of the female shells. Females are bigger and stronger than males. Each toes a male up onto the beach. Scoot, rest, scoot, rest, up to the tide line, where she settles into the wet sand and begins to dig her nest. The female pushes deep into the sand with the front of her shell until she is almost covered. Scritch, scrape, she digs with her legs. When a shallow nest is finished, a small purse covering her book gills opens and out falls thousands of pearly green eggs. The male fertilizes the eggs with sperm before he is dragged to the next nest. Females dig several nests and drop clutches of eggs in each. Then. With the male tagalong still in tow, the females head back to the water. They leave looping figure eight drag tails 
behind them, like signatures in the sand. Each night, for several weeks, horseshoe crabs return to lay more and more eggs. Hundreds of thousands of horseshoe crabs. Billions of eggs. Many eggs are swept out of the nests and sucked into the receding waves. By morning, floating eggs wash up on the shell-speckled beach. They collect along the tide line like a broad green beaded hem on the bay's ruffled skirt. On the beach, in the water, or under the sand lie billions of green eggs. Now the great egg feast begins. The first to arrive is a blackbird with a scarlet patch on its shoulder. It struts down the beach, stopping every few seconds to gobble up green eggs. Each egg is only a tiny mouthful, but together the eggs add up to a bird's banquet. The blackbird fills its gullet and then flies off to its nest in the tail reeds of a nearby marsh to feed its hungry nestlings. Next come a couple of fat morning doves and a grackle with shiny blue-black feathers. The birds daintily peck, peck among the pebbles at the water's edge, being careful not to get their feet wet. All of a sudden, in a blur of wings, a horde of noisy, laughing gulls flies in with crazy cries, chases the other birds off the beach. The gulls crowd together, backs to the sun. Their black heads bob up and down in unison as they jab at the wet sand and gorge themselves on horseshoe crab eggs. Do you think that that just moved the, I think it did. Let me reread that page again for the last paragraph. The gulls crowd together, backs to the sun. Their black heads bob up and down in unison as they jab at the wet sand and gorge themselves on horseshoe crab eggs. The biggest horde of feasters finally arrives. Flying almost nonstop from their winter homes many thousands of miles to the south, from remote beaches in Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego, more than a million starving shorebirds reach Delaware Bay, just in time for the great egg feast. Red knots and ruddy turnstones, sanderlings and plovers, joined by doe, joined by doe witchers and dunlins, willets and yellowlegs, all arrive hungry and eager to dine on salty, sweet eggs. With shrill squeals and whistles, flock after flock descends. They swoop, swirl, swarm over the flat beaches and begin to feast. Long-billed doe witchers poke and root beneath the wet sand at the water's edge. Yellow legs, made, yellow legs wade in the shallows slurping up egg after egg. Sandpipers pick up eggs while playing group tag with the gentle waves. Turnstones scoop out deep holes in crab nests and suck up fresh eggs like so many miniature green peas. When sanderlings try to horn in on a good hole, there's a noisy squabble. Gangs of gulls roam the beach and bully the other shorebirds into giving way. Crowded into the small strip of tide flat between dunes and surf is one of the largest bird gatherings on earth. A million birds feast and feud and fill the air with their loud calls. All day long, soft brown and white feathers bounce down the beach on a steady bay breeze. High in the sky, riding the breeze on its long pointed wings, a young peregrine falcon spies a feast of birds spread out on the beach below. It soars silently along the shoreline, watching and waiting. A small flock of sandpipers, startled by some gulls, rises from the sand like a cloud and moves out over the water. The birds fly in tight formation. As they turn towards shore, they flash the whites of their underwings. Quick as lightning, the falcon drops from the sky and speeds into the flock. Its sharp talons grab a sandpiper from the air. The falcon gives its prey a squeeze and the little bird goes limp. Lazily, the falcon flies inland. Flap, flap, glide to its perch on an old water tower where it can rest and feed. It will return often to the great egg feast. In shallows just offshore, other feasters are busy. 
large schools of minnows nibble on floating masses of horseshoe crab eggs. Swimming among them are visitors from deeper waters, eels and young loggerhead turtles lured in by the tasty feast of eggs. Crabs and sand shrimps scuttle about on the bottom, picking up gray-green eggs that drop from above like manna from heaven. Before long, big fish zigzag into the shallows, hunting for green egg and minnow meals. Their bellies flash quicksilver beneath the waves. All the movement in the water attracts a hunter from a nearby marshy creek to the feast. A female great blue heron, the long-legged bird, carefully wades into the bay and then, standing statue still, peers intently through the rippling surface of the water. Ever patient, she waits and waits for the right moment. Suddenly, her snaky neck snaps, her head lunges down beneath the water, and the heron comes up with a struggling fish speared on her sharp bill. In an instant, she flips the fish and swallows it head first. She blinks as it wiggles in a lump and slides slowly down her gullet. Storm clouds roll in from the west and bring a day of rain. As the gray sky deepens to charcoal, the shorebirds retreat to their nighttime roosting spots in the marsh. Meanwhile, the horseshoe crabs crawl ashore as they have each night since the full moon. Raindrops drum with a hollow tap-tap on their shells. Some of the large female shells are encrusted with other animals, mussels, barnacles, and limpets. They look like parade floats as they drag their mates up onto the sand and dig more nests. The rough storm surf tumbles many onto their backs and pushes them high up the beach. Just before midnight, the rain stops and one by one stars appear. A tiny field mouse skitters down a dune and climbs a mound of sand near the tide line. Its whiskers quiver as it pauses to listen to a faint scraping sound coming from somewhere beneath its feet. The mound of sand moves as the buried horseshoe crab plows deeper. She stirs up a nest dug there the previous night and clusters of hidden eggs are tossed up onto the sand in easy reach for the lucky mouse. It stuffs the eggs into its mouth and then skitters back up the dune. It is late morning and along the high tide line, among the driftwood and debris, are the smelly remains of stranded horseshoe crabs upturned the night before, now baking in the sun. Gulls, never ones to be picky eaters, have already snacked on some of them. Flies buzz about the empty brown bowls. Many more horseshoe crabs lie strewn about the beach, still struggling to right themselves. If the sun dries out their book gills, they will die soon. Crowds of hungry red knots and sanderlings, intent on foraging for more eggs, mill about the horseshoe crabs as if they are not there. The sandy beach is covered in crisscrossing bird tracks and paw prints from last night's egg feasters, a family of raccoons, a fox, and a mouse. At noontime, two excited boys run down to the water's edge to play. Their loud whoops and cries frighten the shorebirds. With a whoosh of wings, the flocks rise up and regroup farther down the beach, away from the commotion. The boys play a game called Rescue the Horseshoe Crab and spend hours turning over the creatures to watch them crawl back to the water and disappear into the waves. Every day from dawn to dusk, the shorebirds have gobbled up horseshoe crab eggs. Now, thanks to the great egg feast, they are strong and fat. Swirling whirlpools of noisy birds spiral about the tidal flats. Like the horseshoe crabs, these migratory birds must travel to their breeding grounds, make nests, and lay eggs. Flocks are already leaving Delaware Bay to head north to the Arctic. Those that get there first will have the best nesting sites for raising their young during the short Arctic summer. On this sunny, sparkling morning, two weeks after their arrival, as if of one mind, flock by flock they circle the flats a few times and then swiftly fly away. Songbirds and shorebirds, minnows and eels, turtles and foxes, mice and raccoon, fishes and shrimps and crabs. The guests at the great egg feast have eaten more than seven billion eggs. But many, many 
horseshoe crab eggs still remain safe in their nests. Cool breeze softly slushes through the dune grasses on a bright moonlit night. Beneath the sand where waves lick at high tide's edge, a tiny egg is hatching. Out pops a pale horseshoe crab larva, barely the size of a freckle. It kicks its five sets of legs and tries to swim through the wet sand. Wave after wave reaches high up on the beach until finally sand and larva are swept into the bay along with millions of other horseshoe crab larvae hatched this night. In the bay waters, the horseshoe crab larva grows and grows. It sheds its old shells and grows larger ones many times until after eight or 10 years, it's finally an adult. Then one night in early spring, the horseshoe crab crawls from the muck at the bottom of Delaware Bay and begins a journey a journey horseshoe crabs have been making every spring for millions and millions of years. Join me now in an activity. All right, let's review the life cycle of a horseshoe crab. Like all the other life cycles we've been talking about this school year, the life cycle of a crab also starts with eggs. And the female or the mama horseshoe crab goes onto shore and digs a hole, right, for her eggs. She makes a nest so that she can put the eggs there so that the daddy or the male can come and fertilize the eggs. This process is known as spawning. Then the horseshoe crabs hatch and when they hatch the larvae emerge and they swim and feed for about six days. Then The larva becomes a juvenile. So that means a young horseshoe crab. And during this time, they're eating mollusks and clams and blue mussels. And finally, the horseshoe crab molts, which means it sheds its exoskeleton to grow. And this happens several times during the first two to three years. And as the horseshoe crab grows larger, the time between the molts increases. So it's not molting as often. Horseshoe crabs will molt 16 to 17 times over about nine to 11 years before they are fully grown and can then mate themselves. And then the life cycle starts over with the eggs. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.